Hi guys, today we will discuss uh, another interesting topic concerning uh, maintenance planning. Today we will discuss the main tools, concepts that you need to know in order to master maintenance planning. The first thing I believe we need to know is uh, how to compare between the maintenance planning job and um, projects. Uh, as a matter of fact, there are some uh, common factors, some common items between uh, projects and maintenance planning. And I always give this example that maintenance planning is like a project with a small scope or with a small scale. The first item which um, in a common with the projects is the time constraint. All the time when we are running a maintenance planning program or maintenance planning activities, we have a time constraint. So we need to finish our maintenance activities within a certain time. The second item is the money constraint. So as per the projects, the maintenance planning also has a certain budget that you need to spend the money within. You, you need to spend and to execute the maintenance activities within a certain budget of money. So you have a cost constraint, you have a time constraint, and you need to deal with the maintenance planning within those main outlines, main borders. The third item, which in common also with uh, projects, is the contracted jobs. Same as the projects, most of the activities are being outsourced or subcontracted to professional contractors. Maintenance planning also could be operated or run the same as the project. So you can assign or contract or outsource some of your jobs to a contractor. So you don't have to have a big team, permanent team in the plant or in the facility that you are running the maintenance activities in. No, you can outsource or subcontract some of your jobs to contractors. The following point is the job plans. So you need to have a job plan, a very detailed job plan, and we will talk later on in one of the slides about the details needed to have a good job plan. The following point is the schedule. In most of the projects, most of the professional people are using Primavera. Primavera actually is a very capable tool and very skillful tool, but for big scale projects. But most of the project people as well, like maintenance planners, they are using in most of the time MS Project. An MS Project is a very effective tool and a very nice tool to be used. And it could be used actually for both small scale and big scale projects. The following point is the CMMS or the Computerized Maintenance Management System, which is a very common tool in most of the plants nowadays. You could hear uh, the term or the name Maximo, SAP or Impact. Those kind of softwares, they are being used to manage your planning or maintenance planning programs. In the next slide, um, we would talk about um, how to manage a plant or facility uh, from HR perspective, how the hierarchy, how the organizational chart is being formed in most of the plants. In most of the plants, you would find um, the top of the uh, operations uh, named the plant manager or sometimes the general manager, it depends on the industry. Uh, but most of the time, you would see uh, underneath this plant manager two main functions reporting directly to the plant manager, which is the maintenance manager and the production manager. The production manager sometimes is called uh, operations manager as well. So the maintenance manager, under, underneath the maintenance manager, three main functions are usually reporting to the maintenance manager. The head of mechanical execution, the head of electrical execution, and the head of planning. And you need to have a full cooperation and a teamwork between those three functions, those, those three main functions actually, in order to get a strong uh, maintenance organization and in order to have a really robust maintenance system in any plant. Some of the industries, uh, you would find also some more uh, functions uh, underneath um, the maintenance manager. Sometimes you could uh, find a dedicated team uh, doing the job of inspection 
or quality control. And um, one more job or one more department uh, could be also underneath the maintenance manager, which is the improvement function. Actually, the improvement function is one of the most important functions uh, working for the maintenance department. And the, um, the guy who is um, in charge of this improvement usually is called a reliability engineer. This guy um, is in charge of tracing and tracking all the failures, all the incidents, and uh, he always analyzes these incidents to know the root cause behind those incidents and how we can overcome those root causes in the future. This slide, um, we will learn a little bit more about the work order flow. And um, this schematic diagram, actually, it's not typical uh, in all the plans, uh, but um, most of the um, um, most of the steps um, captured in this schematic diagram, you would find any place. Um, for example, the first thing um, that we need to have in order to start the maintenance cycle or the work order flow is the finding. This is the base that you will build uh, your maintenance program upon. Um, these findings is, is coming uh, from anyone in the plant, maybe from the production uh, team, maybe from the maintenance team. Um, some industries have a dedicated the team, as we um, mentioned before, a dedicated team in charge of uh, doing the inspection job. So usually they are doing a regular checks or a regular inspection jobs and the outcome or, or the findings out of these inspection jobs it would be the input for our maintenance cycle uh, once those uh, uh, inspectors or once those um, uh, people um, um, started to create uh, uh, work requests based on these findings this work request should be uh, directed to the maintenance planner who is really doing the planning job. Planning job means that he is uh, assigning the proper materials needed to, to do the replacement or the repair. He's assigning also the needed manpower, uh, the estimated duration to do the job, uh, what kind of tools we need to use in order to do the job, and what kind of um, mobile equipments or special tools we need to use. So he makes everything ready for the execution team in order not to waste any time looking for tools or issuing materials or such of these things which really uh, waste time. Uh, after the, the, the job is planned and ready in the work order, then the planner is issue, uh, usually issues the, the, the work order to the execution department. And once the execution department uh, execute the job based on the schedule, uh, they should, uh, first thing, they should close or complete the job on the system which being used, or even if you are using the paperwork, they should complete and they should give their word that we already finished the job. And then they should also give feedback about the job plan that they used to complete the job. Was it really realistic? Was there any um, difference between the, the estimated um, uh, material or manpower or duration and the actual thing that they used? So they keep working on improving uh, these uh, job plans. So the next time um, the same people or another team or another supervisor is doing the same job, he would use this improved um, uh, job plan to do the job in the fastest way, in the safest way, and in the cost-effective uh, way as well. Let's talk now a little bit about the job plan. What are the main contents of uh, any job plan? Um, usually in all the mature companies, in all the multinational companies, safety is the first priority. So we need to include uh, all the safety precautions needed to do the job in a safe way. Uh, the second thing or the second main content of any job plan is the steps or the instructions. What uh, we should do in order to replace or repair, what, um, uh, what is the first step, which part we need to dismantle first, what, um, what kind of tools we need to use next, uh, how we are going to weld, how we are going to uh, tie it, uh, what kind of uh, torque wrench we need to use. 
how much is the torque that we need to tie it with and, and so on so on so um, the next thing is the uh, material needed or spare parts so the spare parts is the third part of the any job plan um, uh, it needs to be uh, ready and it needs to be captured in the job plan as well uh, the following part is the tools what kind of tools we are using uh, either uh, normal hand tools or special tools like um, a grinding machine like a welding machine or a cutting torch and the following point is the manpower how many people we need how many helpers how many uh, uh, welders fitters riggers and so on and the last thing is the mobile equipment do we need to, to use a crane how much is the weight of this crane and do we need to use a sky lift or a scissor lift or a forklift all of these mobile equipment should be mentioned and stated clearly in the job plan as well Turn now about the shutdown or um, sometimes they call it turnaround um, how we manage uh, shutdown usually in, in most of the plants most of the um, industries uh, they have two times a year uh, to shut down all the equipments and to do an overall for all the equipments especially the critical and big equipments which we need to run uh, almost for six months uh, it's really in some of the industries they stop once a year okay to do all the needed overalls but it, in most of the industries it's very common to stop two times a year um, the first thing we need to start with in order to um, to manage our shutdown is to list down all the critical activities we need to do we need to know what exactly we need to do what big jobs or big activities we need to do during this shutdown um, what kind of overalls we need to do in order to make sure and confirm the performance of the equipments after this shutdown um, and the the health of, of, of this equipment will last till the next shutdown after we list down all the critical activities we need actually to estimate the cost how much those activities will cost us so we can identify our budget and it's very important also to know the contracted jobs because part of these activities will be done through our permanent team and part of the jobs will be done through the contracted uh, uh, jobs I mean through the contractors through outsourcing uh, the jobs um, in some plants some industries they have a total management so they they are relying 100 percent on the contractor to, to do all the uh, maintenance activities we need to uh, also build uh, clear job plans for all of our critical activities and this is very important we cannot overlook this because uh, based on these job plans we will identify the the duration of the shutdown and and uh, um, we can actually make sure that uh, those activities will not take more than uh, the, the 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 right time to uh, to be executed um, the last thing is the critical path method or CPM and this is a very important uh, methodology of managing any project or uh, small-scale projects like the, the shutdown or, or the maintenance activities and we need to identify actually the critical path the critical path simply is the series of the consequence uh, activity of the consequence consecutive consecutive activities uh, which um, um, if one of those if one of these activities um, took a longer time uh, it will uh, delay the whole project it will delay the whole shutdown period so we need to identify our critical path based on the sequence of uh, our activities uh, which uh, which one is predecessor and which one is a successor activity and based of the based on this we will identify our critical path and then we can monitor this critical path activities on on, on a daily basis so in case that we um, um, observe uh, any of these activities uh, which might take longer than the estimated duration so we can take some corrective actions like increasing the number of manpowers uh, the number of manpower in order to finish the job on time or uh, we might um, delay some other jobs in order to do this job uh, uh, at the beginning so we need to do something uh, maybe this uh, we could we, we will take we will talk about uh, later on and in, into more details but we need to take some corrective actions on on those 
uh, activities uh, located on the critical path so we confirm that our shutdown or turnaround will, will end, will finish uh, in the proper time and in the planned time. Um, through this uh, session we um, ran very quickly through some of the uh, most important um, concepts and tools that we need to use and we need to know in order to master uh, the maintenance planning. Um, maybe later on we will recommend some of the documents or books that you need to read in order to dig a little bit more and to master uh, all of these topics uh, one by one. Um, um, I hope that you enjoyed the uh, slides and I wish uh, that you will continue continue listening to our uh, programs and sessions. Um, you can visit us also on our website www.light-education.com or on our, uh, on our uh, Facebook page um, Light Enterprise-Education. Uh, you will find uh, all the um, uh, videos available, some of the nice posters, uh, some of the um, uh, nice links to uh, some um, um, uh, beneficial uh, uh, websites or documents. Thank you very much and see you soon in the next slide.